So, you want to speedrun Celeste, huh? Buckle in, this is going to be a long one. There's so many nuances to speedrunning any game that it can be difficult to cover every important detail in one video, but I feel like there is a way to go about this methodically. While it may be a long journey, it doesn't have to be such a difficult one. Well, besides the execution part, that's on you. Sometimes it can be hard trying to get into speedrunning if you don't know what kind of tech you should be prepared for, especially with a game like Celeste where it can get pretty advanced. So what's the goal here? Well, this is the first installment in a series of videos dedicated to breaking time thresholds. We'll be going over every barrier from sub hour all the way to world record pace, talking about routing, mechanics, and the strats that blend them together. This will act more as a speedrunning essentials guide rather than a room by room explanation of how to optimize the entire run, or else we'd be here for quite a while. But for any room I don't go over, I'll have a playlist with every single chapter showing the best sub hour strats I found for each room. Lastly, before we get into it, it's important to mention that if you already know some Celeste tech, like supers and hypers, then feel free to experiment with different tech or strats that work for you. Just make sure that you're confident in those strats. Risky stuff can be consistent if you practice, and practice will bring confidence. But no one likes to reset runs over and over again if you're hitting a brick wall. Or, hey, just throw yourself in the deep end and do the hardest stuff imaginable. I'm not your dad. First things first. More than anything, you need to be in the right mindset. So let's tone it down and get serious for a moment. You can do this. Every loss, every death is a learning experience. Practice will make you better and you will be able to reach the goals that you set for yourself. Don't beat yourself up and remember to breathe. My hope is that you'll get past each threshold and in the end, no matter where you end up, you can say, I'm proud of my accomplishments. So, are you ready to dive in? I present to you, the Celeste Any% Percent Journey, part one, sub hour pace. The main question to ask ourselves is, what is necessary for getting sub hour in Celeste? What kind of mechanics do I need under my belt to get this done? Well, I gave it a quick test run. I decided to try out a run that would not include a single mechanic that the game does not teach you in prologue. So no supers, no hypers, no wall bounces, nothing. And the goal was to beat the game in less than an hour. So, how did it go? Actually, pretty well. I was able to beat the game in 57 minutes and 24 seconds, well within sub hour. But I wish I could tell you it was that easy. While I may have done it without any sort of additional mechanics, I made up for that handicap with experience in the route. A lot of experience. And not just experience with speedrunning, but also beating every single side of every chapter deathless. Except for Farewell. So is it possible to beat the game without any advanced strats in less than an hour? Absolutely. But is it reasonable? Uh, that's the problem I found with my experiment. Just because it's possible doesn't mean it's reasonable. Fortunately, if you look at the length of this video, there are still ways to get sub hour without simply telling you to die less or get good. So what kind of tech will we need to know? Well, the more the merrier, but I found that this would be the key tech to get a hold of now before we get into talking about specific chapters. They may seem like trivial time saves, but in the scope of an entire run, they add up. We can run through this very quickly. 2B teaches you how to dream jump. This is done by pressing jump as you're leaving a dream block. The longer you hold jump, the longer the jump itself will be, just like jumping normally. These disappearing blocks are quite slow to get rid of in 2A and other areas, but if you jump after landing on them, it'll disappear much faster. Just be sure to jump high enough after landing though, or else it may not crumble away when trying to dash down. It'll also not crumble away fast if you happen to grab the side of the blocks. When climb jumping, you want to hold jump for as long as possible and space your inputs out. Don't spam it or you're just burning stamina. Instead, I recommend using two jump buttons mapped to whatever is comfortable for you. Press and hold one jump button for the first climb jump, then start tapping the other for the rest of the climb jumps. This will ensure full height climb jumps and getting the most bang for your buck on your stamina usage. This is just a good habit to have. God, I wish I knew about this one too. Fast bubbling is just pressing dash in a direction right after entering a bubble in order to make it move faster. This goes for both green and red bubbles. Just make sure you're actually in the bubble before pressing dash or else you'll just dash into the bubble if you have a dash. Spring canceling is simply dashing soon after hitting the spring instead of getting the full height from it. 
This will especially be useful in 4A against these pesky snowballs when we need to move a bit faster to make some cycles faster and easier. To fast fall, hold down while you fall. Yeah, that's it. Sometimes you're falling for a long time, so speeding it up means getting a faster time. Also, Madeline starts looking kind of funky. Supers are momentum boosts involving a jump immediately after a dash. While a bit more advanced, it will be critical for a single section 5A, which will save minutes of time to execute. So this will be super important to practice and get the hang of, but not essential in any other part of this tutorial. Just a reminder, we're trying to target the most important time saves in a reasonable amount of time without making things too complicated for sub hour. If things seem too simple or too slow for you, experiment, go wild. But for the scope of this video, simpler will be better. So let's start with the most important question of all, where the heck are we supposed to go? Even if it's slow, just take the time to walk through room by room, not worry about optimal strats and get familiar with the route. We're gonna take it nice and easy and go chapter by chapter. Here's chapter one. Probably not used to seeing city like this. That's because we're looking at the chapter through the debug window. This is where I will highly recommend you download Olympus, Everest, and the speedrun tool for Celeste if you have it on PC. It has a ton of neat features, but I'll go over the most important ones necessary to make your life so much easier. Everest enables the game's debug map and allows you to traverse any chapter and place yourself in any screen at will. Speedrun tool will give you access to features like save states and timing rooms or batches of rooms. And that's how I'll recommend you get familiar with the route. Follow this area in the debug menu and memorize which rooms transition to which. Knowing how to get from point A to point B will already take care of any potential slowdowns that can come from being unfamiliar with the route. Just make sure that if you plan on submitting runs, you have to be on Vanilla Celeste. So if you're using Everest, go back to the title screen and hold right and you'll be launched straight into the vanilla version. Speaking of debug maps, here you go. Just running through these, take screenshots, no flash photography, please. Just be on your merry way. All right, all right, hurry up, hurry up. We got a lot to talk about and not enough time on our hands. Okay, okay. So, with those maps in hand, go off, wander, try some ILs, also known as individual levels. See if you can go from the beginning to end without wandering into a room you don't have to be in. Like I said, I won't be going over every single room, but I will go over the rooms that either have great potential for time loss or great potential for a lot of stupid deaths. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Oshiro, you stupid bitch. One last tidbit that could help with keeping pace for that sub hour is keeping these times in mind. There's plenty of ways to get a sub hour time, but this will be the most balanced way to look at it. While you're practicing ILs, try to beat these times. Doing them individually to hit these goals will be good practice for when you eventually go for that sub 50 and 40 and 30, and you get the idea. So let's get into, oh, bup, 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 bup. can't let you get too far just yet. You gotta pass this checklist first. Did you turn off screen shake? And turn on photosensitive mode so you can actually see what's going on. Oh, it adds the experience of the game. All right, all right. Well, did you at least map a down and confirm binding for fast cutscene skips? If the answer is no, go do it, then answer yes. We're here for speed, people. Also, go ahead and bind a button to crouch dash while you're at it since you'll need it in the future. Do you know how to confirm deaths? Just press confirm whenever you die. Free time save. Lastly, I'm gonna be throwing these words around. It's best to get familiar with them so that it makes sense down the line. We have entry cycle and death cycle. For rooms that have moving things in it like bunnies or snowballs, there exist these two cycles. Entry cycle refers to the state of moving obstacles when entering a screen, and death cycle refers to, well, the cycle of obstacles after dying. Sometimes it'll be good to know the death cycle for rooms you struggle with in case an entry cycle strat doesn't work out. Finally, when going into this, if there's any important advice I can offer that I've been given for running full game, just don't reset so aggressively. Or at the very least, don't reset until you finish resort. The longer times you have, the more this pertains to you. It helps with mindset and getting comfortable with mistakes, which is something that will not change anytime soon. Okay, now it's time to get into the essentials for sub hour chapter by chapter. Let's start with the obvious, prologue. There isn't much here. Best advice I've ever been given, hold right, hold grab, and try to squeeze in as many short hops as possible. 
These short hops give you a little boost in speed and can actually save you a second or two. It'll just be a good habit to get into. Also, make sure to skip Grandma's speech and the tutorial bird with your down and confirm binding. You'll need to do the same thing for every cutscene in the game, so make sure it's a comfy button. We're looking for anything less than 35 seconds. Now, on to Forsaken City. City is straightforward and does not have a very complicated route. Without any sort of complex mechanics, it'll be fairly reasonable to get a time less than two minutes. Remember, if you have to play a room or two safe, it is much better to execute a strat you trust rather than getting upset and going into a death loop with something that doesn't work. Frustration is, by far, one of the biggest speedrun killers in basically any game. Keep your cool, take your time, and City will be a breeze. Here's where we can start talking about a few rooms in particular. Old Sight has a lot of intense optimization, but thankfully it isn't very difficult to get a decent time that ensures a sub hour run. The any percent route takes you in and out of this area since all you need to do is look in the mirror to unlock the dream blocks. Then you're met with the first potential run killer, Battling. She follows your inputs about one and a half seconds after you enact them, so knowing how to dodge her is key in not wasting time. So let's look at some of the rooms that can cause problems. First up is this four coin room. The easiest way to take care of this without dying is this movement here. Just practice the room over and over and you'll get the hang of it. Repetition will be a big theme throughout literally your entire speedrunning journey, so you'll have to start enjoying the process now. Here's just a little safety strat for the end of this room. But then, we have this monstrosity. It is heartbreaking to have a death at the very end of this room. So here's how we're gonna handle it safely. Get down to this platform here and down left dash. Hey, there's a secret. Go down, dash left, get around the block and continue to the three coin section. The best order I'd recommend is jumping then dashing through the block so you land on this platform. Grab the coin, loop around to go down and dash right towards the second coin. Then under the platform, do a small dream jump and go left, grab the last coin and head down. Easy and safe, right? Now you can progress the game normally, wake up, keep holding right, dash along, and in this room, just try to dodge the springs as best as you can since they kill time. By the end of this level, if you're sitting with a time under three and a half minutes, it's looking pretty good for you. Okay, no one is ever happy about this one. When it comes to racking up deaths, Resort is one of the chapters that takes the cake next to Reflection and Summit. So let's review. Die as few times as possible. Okay, good review. This is where if you haven't started getting familiar with Speedrun Tool, you'll want to. Just take a moment to map some bindings in the Mod Options menu to some easy to hit buttons and you'll be golden. You can create a save state in any screen using the button you have mapped in the Config menu. Then loading that save state will bring you back if you mess up your strats. You can even time yourself based on each individual screen or batches of screens. Just a tip for testing full screens, use a save state before entering the room you want to practice. That way, you get used to how you enter a room and execute the strats all at once. For even better practice, push your save state back some more rooms to work your strats into the overall run. This will probably be the most important tool in your arsenal. The sooner you can get comfy with the speedrun tool, the better off you'll be. Just take my word for it and test it out when continuing to learn these rooms, will ya? Back to resort. Let's start with dashing through here however you please, regular dashes, wave dashes, anything that works. Here. Use the transition for the dash refills to grab this key a bit faster than normal, then keep on moving. Now this room can be a bit tricky. Just follow this strat on entry cycle and you should be fine. If you die, reset the room cycle by leaving and coming back. In the future though, it may be a good idea to find a death cycle for certain problematic rooms you may have since changing screens kills a lot of time. Keep on strolling along until you meet back up with Oshiro here in the middle of this huge mess. There is an important order to go in that'll be good to drill into your muscle memory now. We'll start with crates, then books, then towels. Oh, you don't know which direction is which. That's all right, I don't either. I like to think of them as down, up, and right. Since Oshiro likes to run around every time you complete a room, this route ensures that he is as close as possible as well as in the direction we need to be headed. Remember through these rooms to take things slow if you really need to. Use strats you're confident in and you'll do just fine. Like here, you can dash once you get through the room transition, a few hops and dashes, and you're safe to keep going. 
A few rooms later and we're in books. This room looks scary, but if you want to take your time, you can land on the ground, dash over the bunny, wait for the second bunny to go up, and dash over to the end. Easy! This one also looks scary, but it's actually scary. Learning the death cycle specifically for this room won't be too bad of an idea. Especially since if you do die, um, have fun re-entering. Upright when you're in the air from the transition. Then do a small hop on this platform and dash to the right here under this bunny. It's gonna start coming down quick, so you gotta wall kick fast. Then the rest of this is pretty straightforward. But for death cycle, you can upright in the same way. Wait a second for the bunny to move out of the way so you can jump and upright. And if you wanna be especially safe, chill in these towels for a second before dashing up and wall kicking your way to safety. Now keep going, fast fall through here. And after talking with Oshiro, you'll only have one section to go. Here, delay your jump and dash for each set of bunnies to avoid them. But you should be able to just hold right and execute this if done correctly. Little neat trick here, hug the left wall, fall through the transition, then just keep holding left and fall down through this hole under the dust bunny. Scary, but consistent. Also, don't only hold left or you'll slide down the wall and slow yourself down. You can either hold down or down left in order to stay away from this thing. A few more rooms later and you're an elevator shaft. That's half of the pain out of the way. The next big problem room I've seen would be this key room. The hardest part is timing these bunnies, but once you grab the key, you can hit start and you're down confirm binding to get teleported back to the beginning. This is known as a death warp and we'll make use of this more in later videos. Now in the last checkpoint of resort is where you may want to direct most of your attention to. Oshiro sucks, but with some planning and practice, we can minimize the struggles we may have with him. I can't tell you how many runs I've lost in this last checkpoint, so if you're going to rehearse any series of screens one by one, they'll be the ones to do. Specifically this last abomination. It's a huge screen with so many ways to die, so let's simply not do that. Take a look at this strat throughout the room. There's gonna be a lot of times where you'll want to know how to do a room you see someone else do, and getting used to observing and copying strats will help you learn efficiently in the long run. This is the homework I was talking about, so time to go nuts with the speedrun tool. Luckily, this section has no super difficult tech, so piecing together when to jump or dash is pretty simple. But down the line, when you see someone do crazy stuff like this, yeah, we'll get there. So, now with resort done, we should be looking at a time under 9 minutes and 15 seconds. Whew! Resort is such a pain. And lucky for you, Ridge at this level of running the game is a nice stroll along the beach compared to resort. As long as you follow this route, you should be good to go. There's nothing too wild here that'll be necessary for sub hour, but let's go over this last bit. Spoiler, the end of most chapters will be the absolute worst. One room at a time now. There's a good thing to be learned from this room. But first, dash off the block once landing on it, then jump and get the full height of the cloud. Now, when it comes to being given momentum by things like Kevin's, traffic blocks, or clouds, jumping a tad later than you think will more often than not give you the desired momentum boost. You can also then use that fast bubbling tech we talked about to get onto the moving block faster. Then dash down into the bubble and get around to the top. Now this room can be a bit tricky, I highly recommend practicing this route over and over again on entry. And instead of starting from the cliff face checkpoint over and over, let's get into the habit of using the speedrun tool you downloaded earlier. Yeah, I'm gonna be saying that a lot in this video. It starts with two right dashes, jumping over the snowball, then three more right dash inputs to get in and out of the bubble quickly. One more jump dash, then do a short jump here. This snowball is coming in hot or I guess cold. So you need to fall before it hits you to get to this bubble. Then you can dash right and upright to land on this platform. Jump, upright, then jump and dash to this wall to go over this next snowball. And you can drop down here. This platform is a falling one, so just jump and upright to safety, dash upward into the bubble, then dash away like your life depends on it. As a whole, this is how the room should look. You're almost done with Ridge! Now here's where spring canceling can help bunch with spacing out these snowballs. 
you'll only be holding right and dashing the entire time. Dash, then jump dash to hit this sprint. Wait until this snowball passes and dash to get to the second sprint. But very quickly after hitting it, dash to the right again towards this next sprint. This will remove the time wasted from traveling too high after the spring bounce and also get the following snowball to be placed in a more friendly position. Then you just get to the next spring and get to the top by holding up rather than climb jumping, just for safety. Quick thing to note, why dash right and not upright? While in most areas you may get some more horizontal distance by getting higher up using an upright dash, cliff face wind is no joke. Dashing has this fun property that makes it unaffected by wind. But once that dash state is gone, bye bye So try dashing only horizontally whenever you can if you need to cover distance against wind. Now we can get some more fast bubbling practice in. This solution is the exact same way you do it casually, except you're hitting dash an extra time per bubble to keep the run going. This is the last room in Ridge that needs any explaining. Get to the bubble and dash right to land on this platform then crumble it immediately by jumping. Don't be afraid of this next part, just trust the process. Dash down right into the bubble, fast bubble upright, then dash up to grab this wall. Climb up so you can jump to the right, land on this cloud, then take the bubble up and finish the screen. There's some fun tech in this room that in later videos will take advantage of this routing. After one more screen, you've reached the end. I'd say we're about a third of the way done since chapters five through seven are dense. If your ridge time is less than this, I'd say we're sitting pretty comfy. Temple gets a bit weird when it comes to routing for any percent. The reason is because of a minor exploit in Celeste where finishing a B side will still unlock the following chapter even if the A side is not complete. As a result, Temple B side can save a huge amount of time over the A side, even with the time that it takes to pick up the cassette. The caveat here is that because it's a B-side, the difficulty shoots up dramatically. So for now, just remember this exploit exists for future videos and let's take it easy. So if you've been struggling to get sub hour into less, this could be the problem area. While there's a couple of things we'll go over, these are by far the biggest two time saves. We'll go over these in a little bit. First, find your way through temple. Keep going, going, going and <gasps> wait oh no what about the key how will we ever get past this impassable object oh gotcha so yeah this is free time save if you've grabbed the blue heart in temple then you already know about this bubble if not here's a secret bubble this allows you to skip getting the key needed for this door and will save you a couple of rooms now go into the mirror dimension, become this uncomfortable blob, confirm this death to save literal seconds. Confirm it! Get past more uncomfortable blobs and you'll be in search. If you remember your casual playthrough, this area sucks to navigate, but worry not. There is an extreme time save here that can save minutes, but you're gonna have to put in some work. This is the only instance I will be telling you you'll need to super for. And not just super, but reverse super. I've got a whole video talking about mechanics in this game, so if you don't know how to super or reverse super, I've got a link to the video with timestamps below. Don't worry, you've still got this. Doing this skip keeps you from requiring even more keys you'd have to grab to take this bubble all the way to the left. Welcome to search skip. Be at the ready in the second open area next to the exit. You're going to dash to the right, jump to the left, Hold jump for dear life, then dash up left when your butt is just a tad too close to the spikes. There you go. You've just done one of the biggest skips in the game and you've executed a reverse super. Give it a lot of attempts. It saves so much time that even after five or 10 deaths, you might still not lose time compared to the alternative route. Now some notes while practicing this. What we're looking for here are these circles indicating momentum lots of height and speed, and red hair on Madeline. If you jump to the left too late after the right dash, you'll do a sad little hop and maybe die. If you jump too early to the left, you'll see this blue hair on Madeline and definitely die. If you dash to the right and press jump too fast and don't press left before pressing jump, you're probably also dead. 
Get a feel for the timing on this by making a save state and getting to work. The sooner you can understand supers and reverse supers, the better. And you will. It'll become embedded into your muscle memory in no time. The rest of this level is the absolute favorite part of anyone's Celeste journey, Seeker Hell. This is where I must reiterate to you that you need a plan. Experiment with how these Seekers react to your movements. They'll react based on where you are and when they have clear sight of you. With this info, you can manipulate how they behave since there really isn't any RNG in this game at all. Try to follow the same path every time. At this moment, any plan that gets you from one end of the room to the other without dying is a good plan. Consistency. Rinse, repeat. That is the essence of speedrunning. If you're dying a lot and find yourself getting frustrated, take a second and think about why it's happening and how to avoid it. One room I can talk about specifically that could cause a different kind of trouble is here. I've seen some pretty funny shenanigans take place in this screen if you throw Theo or Dash at the wrong time. All you have to do is throw Theo from this position, then dash up to grab the left wall. The platform will stop moving before Theo lands on it, so Theo won't get launched off. Then just make sure not to dash until you grab Theo and leave the screen. After some more seeker frustration, you're out! Two chapters to go! Hopefully you've got a time under 10 minutes and are ready for, arguably, the most fun part of Celeste speedrunning. When you get some more advanced mechanics under your belt, you can do some pretty amazing things in this chapter. But for now, to solidify that sub hour, let's take it slow and safe. Nothing is different at all from your casual playthrough here. Get through start, get through lake, then you're in hollows. Grab the feather, go to the right, then keep going until you've got two paths in front of you. There's some optimal combinations of these rooms, but we'll settle on this one for now. Top, 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 bottom, top, top. For this room, let's start getting used to using that demo button. These spikes look scary, but using the demo button close enough to them will help you duck under and get to the other side without moving this Kevin. This is another room I'd say you want to learn the entry and death cycles for. It can be quite problematic if you do end up dying here. Fortunately, if you set them up right, they should have the same result either way. More walking, more dashing. Now! We take a fall into this section. There's two convenient skips you can take. Well, three, but this one's not all that useful since it's slower and riskier since you avoid the death checkpoint here. So ignore that one. The first one is nice and easy. Just grab this wall and you'll fall right through. The third is a bit finicky. So if you want to get the hang of it, go for it. Otherwise, you can go around and won't be too big of a deal. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Wait! It's battle in time. You've got this. Your one piece of advice, don't hesitate. Have a safe plan for every room because fireballs and lasers create scare and scare creates death. Got it? It'll be fine. You made it! Now get ready! With your time hopefully under 11 minutes and your double dash acquired, it's time to take care of the largest section of Celeste Any% percent, The Summit. Seven checkpoints stand in between you and the peak of that mountain. All the way up! There! It's a lot, but we're gonna get through it together. Each checkpoint has its own quote unquote worst screen, and those are gonna be the ones that I go through along with some routing notes. Again, confident strats will get you to sub hour, but fast strats are fun with a little risk sprinkled on top. So pick your poison. But let's go nice and safe for this video, and later in the series, we'll get to have some fun. Zero meters. So a lot of this is pretty standard, but let's throw in some spring canceling, specifically in this room. After dashing over this pillar, hitting this spring, then dashing twice to the right, you've got this bad boy over here. We have done vertical spring canceling, but horizontal can get pretty scary in between these spikes. It's all about timing. 
right after hitting the upper portion of this spring, dash upright, then clear the spikes and dash to the spring to get your dash back and continue on. You actually have a lot of room for this strat to work, but if you hit the spring too low, you won't get enough height to clear the spikes. After a few dates with the speedrun tool, this should get baked into your muscle memory in no time. Later in zero meters is this long room. Here's an easy route to follow. Notice how at the end, I'm landing in this hole in the wall. This will be important for future routing, but that's it for zero meters. 500 meters. All right, more fun shenanigans. You don't actually have to touch these traffic blocks. You'll notice more and more that the platforming they lay out becomes more of a recommendation rather than a requirement. In this room, you can do a full height jump, up left, then up dash, and you'll be able to make it. That spring? Nah, don't need it. Just go ahead and grab the coins and you're good to keep moving. For the last room, dash diagonally once the block is out of your way to get to this area. Then when you use the block for the boost, hold jump the whole way up and you should be able to up dash and upright dash to battle him. Remember, to get a momentum boost, pressing jump late is usually more lenient than pressing it early. And as scary as it is, Get yourself close to these spikes in order to get to battle in as easily as possible. If you hold jump, you'll be safe. 1000 meters. All right, now see this giant dream block? You're gonna wanna up right, then up left, then up right again, then dash left. You can also up right, up left, dash right, then up left too, but they're about the same speed. Only thing to note is that you'll have to mind your timing on each dash. If you dash too early when you're in the block, it may not register as an input. And if it's too late, you're gonna flay like a fish in the air for a bit. To make it easier, you can hold grab and the opposite horizontal direction that you're dashing in to hold onto the dream block once you exit it. For example, a dash upright means you'll have to hold grab and left until you exit the block to hold onto it. For this, there's like approximately a billion ways to do this room. Hugging the left wall, I find to be safe and easy. So that's what I'll show you here. Most of 1000 meters is fairly simple, but this room could propose some issues. Here's where knowing dream jumps really comes in handy. Dash here and dream jump over these spikes. Then you want to dash through the second block, dash right under this floating pillar, and dash upright through this next block. Align yourself so you can dash through the rest of the blocks with no problem. And that about wraps up all the difficult parts of 1000 meters. 1500 meters. Ready for the second hardest part of Summit? Yep, you heard me, second hardest. While 1500 meters is a difficult checkpoint, there's a larger beast waiting for us down the line. If you say you don't struggle with this room, you're lying. Thankfully, we won't have to worry about the harder strats for a while, so for now, we can do this version. Make sure to do a small hop here to get the ideal timing with this bunny from hell. Anyway, dash up and right, wait a bit, jump, then dash up and right again. Then on this platform, stay far left to avoid this bunny. But then you can dash right, upright, jump, and up dash into right dash to get this room done. I'm just gonna tell you now that this is a room you should probably learn the death cycle for. God, screw that bunny. Skipping ahead a bit, the safest, fast way to get through here is uprighting after getting full height from the transition. Wait for the bunny to fall to do an upright, another upright, then two right dashes will get you here. But now, mind the change in route. We are gonna break this block to get into this room and do the one of two wave dashes in the run. I've refrained from including any strats involving mechanics like wave dashes because you want to be able to focus on learning the route rather than getting hung up on difficult strats that may not be necessary for sub hour. But this is an exception because for the rest of your Celeste speedrunning journey, this room will be involved and never change. It'll also force you to start getting comfy with wave dashes if you want to start going for sub 50 eventually. With a swift jump in the air, a dash into the ground, and following it with another jump, you'll get enough distance to dash upright then right to get to this platform. Just make sure you hold jump for as long as possible to get the full length of the wave dash. Another perk to this route is that we avoid another pesky dust bunny and the less we see, the better. Unfortunately, there's a lot more we'll have to see in this room before we get out. So on entry cycle, dash twice to the right once you open this door, then fast fall to battling. 
Dash up after she launches you to get to this wall, wall kick, then dash up to her again. The comfy cycle here will allow you to dash up left while the bunny travels down, then down left to get to battle and faster. After you get the boost, wait for the bunny to go up so you can dash right twice to this platform. Lastly, wait for this bunny to come down, jump and dash over it, get the boost, wait for it to come back up, left dash, up left dash, and you're out! Only three more checkpoints to go. 2000 meters. 2000 meters is another doozy, but definitely not as difficult as 1500 meters. Remember your fast bubbling tech. In this next room, it is much faster to get through this top room using the transition to get enough height than up right dash and up dash here to get to this berry room. This long room sucks. So get your speedrun tool at the ready and let's make it suck less. Start with a dash onto this lower ledge, then jump and dash to position this snowball here so you can use your second dash to go under it. Next, dash over the spikes and fall onto this platform to direct the next snowball coming at you. Then you can jump and dash into this bubble. This is one time I'd recommend not fast bubbling and simply pressing right, then following it up with two upright dashes to avoid this next snowball. You'll land on this falling platform, but you should have time to jump, upright twice, then dash your way out of this room. Good job! That's the hardest part of 2000 meters done. And just a minor time save here. Try to keep one dash on your way up so that you can activate this block, then jump off and dash right. Just a cute little strat. Then boost your way out of here. 2500 meters. All right, we're getting there. Optimally, 2500 meters is a monster of a checkpoint, but luckily, Sub Hour can make use of casual strats for basically every room. But in terms of routing, at this stage, taking the bubble left, then taking this top bubble to the right will actually save a good deal of time. For later videos, we'll go back to the standard route with more advanced strats. Getting this key has a few good strats, but the easiest one by far would be falling into the transition. Dashing right, fast falling, dashing left, then upright dash whenever you're safe to. There you go, easy key. Then you can pause and press your down and confirm binding to death warp back to the beginning. Neat, another little area to practice your fast bubbling skills. As for this last room, just don't die under any circumstances. Oh, and screw this block in particular. This will be the second wave dash we use just because it makes this jump way easier rather than trying to time the block properly. One wave dash and an up left and you're safe. Then here, Badalyn boosts you high enough to grab this wall so you don't have to dash and move this block, then end up needing to wait for it. Oh yeah, and don't die. It hurts. A lot. Anyway, you're almost there. Time for the final countdown. 3,000 meters. 30 flags, and you're out. In this beginning portion, it'd be a good learning experience to try some wall bounces out since it would greatly reduce the time spent here and helpful down the line with running the game. But it can be tricky, so I'll still give you the easier way to do this. Jump and upright twice onto here, then dash once onto this wall, but keep your second dash since we'll need to get through this crystal here. Up left dash before hitting the crystal, so when you get through it, you now have two dashes again. Then you should have enough height to input two up dashes and grab the second crystal. Then you can dash up twice more, wall kick, grab the crystal, dash two more times upwards, and you're at flag 29. Now dash twice up to this crystal, climb jump all the way so you can dash up twice again and hit the next crystal, and dash to the wall. We're gonna do the same thing we did for flag 30 where we use our one dash into this crystal to get two dashes, then head up to battle. Flag 28. This is known as downdraft. You'll have to be careful with grabbing walls and conserving stamina since you'll be continually pushed down and it can prove to be problematic. There's a lot to unpack in this section, so I'd highly recommend giving the unlisted videos a view if you want to see exactly the kind of strats that I'd recommend using here. But I will go over all of the more difficult sections. Everything is relatively straightforward until Flag 22. Every spring can be accessed with an up left dash and up dash, so just keep that in mind when traversing here. Flag 21. Just jump and dash upward twice. You'll be able to make it. After a ton of dashes upward, here we are on flag 19. 
updraft. Now everything is extra floaty. You'll also be falling slower. Just keep this in mind as you go through the section. Flag 17. This track can absolutely be cut, but I thought it'd be a fun challenge to include. It just allows you to keep two dashes to speed up this next bit instead of needing the wall kick. But it's definitely not needed. Have at it if you're feeling risky. If not, just use one dash to grab the wall, wall kick, then upright to flag 16. Flag 13. Another tiny time save here. After hitting the second spring, you can dash up then upright and you'll make it over this hump of spikes. As for the coin section, try to spring cancel by dashing up into the first coin, falling to the second, then hitting the right spring and dashing upright, then right into the third. Don't be afraid to fall back on the springs to refresh your dash if you find yourself in trouble. Flag 9. At the tail end of it, you can decide to skip flag 8 by using a left and up dash to get to this wall. Since it's so close to flag 9, the time loss if you die is minimal, so I'd lean more towards practicing and implementing this strat. Right before hitting battling, this is the perfect time to practice your optimal wall climbs. Remember, press and hold one jump for the first climb jump, then tap the other jump after each full height climb jump, and you'll make this with no problem. Flag 5. You can actually skip this, and if you end up dying, you'll respawn there anyway, so it's no big deal. Dash upright twice from the transition, and keep on going. Flag 2. Here is the time to climb like your life depends on it. Well, don't end up dying over it, but it's all nice and casual strats. Flag 1. Here we are. Now don't be that meme who dies on flag 1. We've got enough people doing that. My only recommendation is to hold grab and keep dashing. Go! 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 You made it! But make sure to skip the cutscene as fast as possible since the timer will keep running. Just don't get too ahead of yourself. With that, you have reached the peak of this monstrous guide. Or should I say, the summit. <clears throat> and we have finally come to that point in the video where you don't click off because while we may be done with learning the route, it's definitely not over. You also have to stick around to show a ton of appreciation for everyone listed here. They have all been absolutely critical in the development of this video in so many ways. If you're ever looking for anything Celeste related, we have a community discord full of amazing people willing to help and have conversations. Oh, I also have a discord for my own funny shenanigans as well as a Twitter, Twitch, obviously, and a coffee if you're feeling extra generous. I'll be coming with more videos sooner than you think. And lastly, thank you guys so much for the- Oh my god, what did you do to this video? Well, thanks for the support. Well, that's all I've got for today. So I'll catch you in the next one. And while I'm gone, go get that sub hour. Bye-bye.